Hey, it's Justin Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Ampro 2 software right after this. Before this video starts, make sure to subscribe to me and turn that notification bell to get notified every time I upload a new video, as well as follow me on Twitter at Justin Tech TV to message me or just to see when I'm going to post a new video. That will help me out a lot and thank you in advance. So when I posted the Ampro 2 review, I got a lot of uh, comments saying they didn't really understand the software and what everything did or the lighting effects on the Ampro 2. So I'm just going to go through the OpenSlab starter software and show you what everything does and all the features of the software itself. So I'm just going to get right into it right now. So the first thing that you want to do is download the software. Of course, if you haven't already, I'll leave a link for that in the description. Um, and all you have to do is click Windows if you're on Windows, Linux if you're on Linux, Mac if you're on Mac, and just click on the installation and it should run you through the installation process and it should be pretty simple. Then once you have it installed and opened, it should look like this. Uh, make sure that you do a firmware upgrade. If you haven't already, just hit upgrade under the firmware uh, section here. And you can see mine is up to date. Your light processor, application processor, it might be newer, it might be older, depending on when you bought the Ampro 2. Uh, but yeah, and if you wanna update the actual application, you just go to here. Uh, in the little cog wheel in the bottom left click on it and then hit preferences and then it should bring up a little box like this and here you can change uh, the theme to light or cyan which is just blue instead of I think uh, yeah orange on the other one uh, I just keep it on dark but uh, yeah you can have it like that and you can click it to minimize whenever you quit the program instead of uh, actually uh, quitting. And then to update, you actually just click check new version and then there is no new version. Um, but if you do have a new version, it'll pop up and then you can just install it from here. And yeah, that's about it from here. It's just about help. If you need help, it should pop up with the user ma manual. And yeah, so in the general section, I already went through the firmware section. This is where just where you would update your uh, your keyboard itself and in the general section it's got a bunch of information about your keyboard um, the name of your keyboard which is probably the Ampro 2 if you're watching this video and the battery life if you're running on wireless it will show exactly how much battery is left the runtime of your keyboard it goes even if you have it plugged in I'm almost at a thousand hours on this keyboard but the first uh, few months with this keyboard, it doesn't keep, it didn't keep track. Uh, they fixed it with an update in the software though. And then in the settings here in the general tab, uh, it has layout. Uh, mine's on a custom, but you can just put it to default if you want. Um, I'm not sure why mine was on custom to be completely honest. And then tap, you, you kind of want to have that on. That's what gives you the arrow keys here. Um, so when you tap with them, they will be the arrow keys and when you hold them it'll be just the normal keys like if you hold shift it'll just be the normal shift button if you hold control it'll just be control which is good the magic fn which is um, a useful tool if you're playing games like uh, jump king where it requires the arrow keys if you enable it to like f1 you can hold the, the caps lock key and then you can use the arrow keys and you can actually hold the arrow keys because on here, when you use the tap feature, all you can do is tap them. You can't hold the arrow keys or else it won't uh, it won't uh, register as an arrow key. It will register as the actual key. So that's actually really useful for using the arrow keys um, just by holding the caps lock and then just tapping WAS need D. The next is the macro. Um, this is just what button will um, toggle the macro that you set later on I'll teach you how to do set the macros so stay tuned for that um, so you just hit function or function 2 whichever one you want and then you just tap whatever key um, you set a uh, macro for then caps lock LED it's just 
uh, all would be if you hit caps lock all your keys turn a color that you set it to or default is just the one key that you set it to that will turn a different color then auto sleep it's just I'm pretty sure on wireless only but if you have it enabled it will auto automatically sleep whenever you're not using your keyboard it might be on uh, wire as well I just usually keep it disabled so I'm not I'm not too sure and the Bluetooth bind is you just hit clear um, if you want to reset all your binds uh, you have four binds in total one two three and four you can set them to um, I usually only have one set so I just I don't usually clear it and then next down in the tab is the layout tab um, this is where you can set uh, different uses for each key so the tap layer you can see that the arrow keys are the tap so when you tap them they will just be arrows but you can also set other keys to be like this so if you wanted like uh, enter to be on backspace when you tap it for some reason you just click that hit apply and it will work I'm just gonna cancel that but uh, yeah you can set any key to anything on here so if you hold function 2 you can have it so that layer has a different uh, different key set to a layer or a key that's not set already which is pretty cool and yeah they have different setups already like QWERTY they're different they're all different um, but yeah um, I usually just keep it at my current which is just the default I'm pretty sure and the next one is the light tab for the light you have all these profiles that are ready set in I think they're by default all like this um, and you can also change them by holding the F2 button and the 9 to cycle through or the 0 just to turn them off or back on. Um, but yeah, I usually just keep mine at like a static color which is just like green and you just hit preview and it will change the color or you can like anything if you hit preview it will show you it but you have to hit apply to actually keep it like that. And to create a new profile, you can just hit create and then enter a name like uh, I'll just do test, test, and then you can hit like all keys. We'll do green, and then, like you can make like the W or select all keys again, W A S and D, uh, like pink. Then you hit preview, and then the W A S and D are a different color. Um, this could be useful if uh, if you want to make your keyboard look a little cooler. You can. Make it uh, make it customized to your own liking. The only thing is, it's not like the Razer software where you can have like Wave as like these three keys and the rest of them be static, and, or these ones be like Rainbow and these ones be uh, Wave or um, another uh, lighting mode. For this, you can only have it as one lighting mode at a time. So like colorful can only be colorable for all of them it can't be colorable for just the three it's got to be it's got to be all the same you can't you can't have uh, two different uh, lighting effects okay and the next one down is the macro tab okay for the macro you have to hit create here and the profile on the left side under macro group you create we'll name ours test but you can name yours whatever you want and then you just pick the key that you want to set a macro to. Um, so you hit add macro and then you just hit record macro on the top right of the keyboard picture here in the software. So you click record macro and then if you're doing one for counter strike you do like B4, B5 or whatever. And then I don't know if that's actually a macro but then you just uh, hit save here and then it would save that macro to Z. So whenever you would hit like function one and Z, it would do that macro or whatever you have it set to in the general tab here. Like I have mine set to macro to F1, but you can set it to F2. So whenever you hit F2 and the Z or whatever button you set a macro to, that would work. So that's what the macro in the general tab does. And so yeah, you can set it to any key, you can do any macros. You can do macros for every single key on the keyboard if you really wanted to. The next one is the audio visualization tab here. 
Um, for this, you need, the, I think, a newer keyboard, but I'm not sure if you can upgrade your uh, upgrade your light processor or not, but uh, I haven't. I don't really care about the audio visualization, um, but it says that you do need a 2.11 light processor or newer. Um, it's not really that big of a feature, um, and it doesn't really mean that much to me, um, so I haven't looked into... Uh, figuring out how to upgrade the light processor if you can and I'm not sure if you can or not yeah and that's all for the software um, the lighting effects you can just play around with them they're not that hard to uh, to figure out um, as long as you spend some time working on it and yeah it's actually pretty easy all together um, so let me know if you're still having trouble, I'll help you, and if you want, you can DM me on Twitter, I'll get back to you super quick if you do, and please give me a follow on Twitter as well, and also be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications as I will be uploading new videos every Saturday, so I'll see you guys in the next video.